Hi dear students, welcome to Gatewala. This is Satish Kumar Drishati, Faculty of Measurements and Instrumentation. In one short series, now we are moving to the next lecture after the completion of lectures like error analysis, bridges, AC bridges, DC bridges. Then we have seen PMMC, moving iron. In the last class, we have seen the dynamometer. And today's lecture, I am going to talk about the measurement of energy by using the energy meter. Okay, so these lectures are in a crisp, in one shot, I am giving the complete conceptual understanding so that you can practice more number of questions at the end of the lecture. And today, I am going to talk about these topics. First, we will discuss about some constructional features of energy meter. Then we will go for torque expressions. Then we will see the errors in energy meter. What type of errors? Theoretical topic and some numerical problems also we can go through. What is energy meter? Before understanding it, what is functionality of energy meter? Actually, what is energy? See, my dear students, energy can be actually defined as energy can be actually defined as power integrated over the time period. Okay, one of the important feature in our day to day life, in our home or in our house, how much of electricity is consumed? How many units of electricity is consumed? At the end of the month, every month we are going to get electricity bill. So you have completed some 75 units to 150 units of electricity. So for each unit, 2 pi, 20 pi, say something like that calculation, and you are going to get some electricity bill. Yes or not? Yes or not? So how this energy is accumulated? See, energy meter is a type of integrating instrument here. So this is example best example for integrating instrument energy meter is the best example for integrating instrument okay it is the best example for integrating instrument keep it in mind what is integrating instrument that means it accumulates it accumulates the reading over a period of time it is not like indicating instrument not like recording instrument pmmc is an indicating instrument Cathode ray oscilloscope is a recording instrument, but whereas this energy meter is an integrating instrument, it integrates the values over a period of time. It goes on accumulating, it goes on accumulating. So, energy can be defined as power integrated over a period of time. So, if you see this power formula, so power we know already in the last class we have discussed power is equal to voltage into current into power factor, integration of T that means time if you take. So, we know these units of Vi cos phi or what? The time is second. So, if you divide with a thousand, suppose if you divide this watt with a thousand, you can take it as one kilowatt and this second if you divide with one hour, that means the one hour is have uh, one minute is six, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So, if you convert into that into hours, so 60 into 60, then what happens this? You convert, this will become kilowatt and this will become, understand, kilowatt hour. So, we have to convert that into kilowatt hour. So, this kilowatt hour is expressed as unit. In energy meter, this is one of the important point, the units of energy meter is expressed kilowatt hour. Energy meter units are expressed kilowatt hour. Understand? One unit is equal to one kilowatt hour. One unit is equal to one kilowatt. Okay. So, now, before entering into that particular topic, Energy meter basically constructional feature contains certain units. So, energy meter diagram, let us see the diagram first. I think all of you are able to see this diagram. This is one of the important diagram and on this diagram also we are going to have some questions. What is this energy meter? This particular energy meter is having certain four segments. It contains first the driving mechanism, second thing the torque mechanism, third thing the braking mechanism and the fourth thing is the recording mechanism. Okay, so there are four mechanisms involved. 
what are the four mechanisms involved let me write here the first one we are having the driving mechanism driving mechanism second one the torque mechanism torque mechanism the third one the braking mechanism braking mechanism and the last one recording so these are the four mechanisms involved in the energy so that's a from what we will go in a theoretical way for some 15 minutes because on the construction of energy meter also you should have clarity so if you see in this particular picture you can have three magnets one is this particular magnet i am showing this is the magnet which is in m shape magnet okay so this is the m shape magnet so three types of magnet one is the m shape magnet next if you see next one is a c shape magnet shape magnet okay and the next one is the u shape magnet this is what we call as shaped magnet mcu what is the purpose of these three magnets so these three magnets are actually will come under driving mechanism see the first we know we have to measure the power v i cos phi over the period of time that is what the energy so just update to the our uh, dynamometer here also we are having the pressure coil and the current coil as all of you are aware the pressure coil will deliver you the voltage and the current coil will deliver the current so this is the main current coming from the supply so in this certain portion of the current is entering into pressure coil you can see the pressure coil here so this is the pressure coil so this is a portion of the current it's going like this okay so this is the way it is coming and crossing so this is a current passing through the pressure coil when current passes the pressure coil what happens there is a voltage across the pressure coil so this is going to develop the voltage across the pressure coil got it this is the voltage which is across to the supply always remember we have discussed in the dynamometer it always comes across to the supply next if you see there is other part so this is the ipc and there is another part of the current which is going like this so this is passing through a load this load can be a refrigerator a motor anything like this so this is the current entering here so you can imagine a load here you can imagine a load here so this is the m shape magnet just don't confuse shape magnet c shape magnet this is a u shape magnet okay One second yeah m shape magnet t shape magnet this is a c shape magnet and this is a u shape magnet so now if we check this particular current whichever is coming so this is the current passing through the current coil so this is a current passing through the current coil so this particular current coil is attached to a u shape magnet it is attached to a u shape magnet so this is the current coil and this is a pressure coil so pressure coil will deliver you the voltage reading and the current coil will deliver you the current
current reading. How it is possible? If you observe, there is a spindle. To the spindle, there is an aluminum disc. Okay, na? So, how it is happening here? To understand this, let me explain you here. First of all, the pressure coil, the current passing through the pressure coil, or the voltage is developed across the pressure coil due to the current of the pressure coil. So, that will generate a flux in the pressure coil. Similarly, current coil is there, current coil will deliver you the current coil and that also will deliver you certain flux. Yes or not? So, these two fluxes are going to operate. These two fluxes are exactly going to operate on an aluminum disc. So, this is the aluminum disc. Okay. So, this aluminum disc, I want to show the diagram like this for you. So, this is the aluminum disc. So, on this particular aluminum disc, from two directions, the flux is acting. Suppose if you see, if you consider this as the aluminum disc, my dear, if you consider this as an aluminum disc, from the top, the pressure coil flux is acting and from the bottom, the current coil flux is acting. How, oh, sir? The reason for the pressure coil flux is the current passing through the pressure coil. Okay. See, here, what I want to say, what are the things acting from down and from bottom? We check. From the top, what I am going to get, so there is a VPC and there is a current passing through the pressure coil and because of that, there is a flux in the pressure coil. And from the bottom, we are getting the current passing through current coil. So, because of that, flux in the current coil is coming. So, these are the two fluxes acting on the aluminum disc. So, definitely what happens, these two fluxes are going to interact on this aluminum disc. Aluminum disc is a metal, right? Aluminum disc is a metal. So, this particular aluminum disc is suspended between the two coils and it starts rotating because of the flux interaction and this number of rotations happening in the disc are over a period of time they are proportional to the power that means over a period of time they are proportional to the energy. The more is the energy they are consuming the more will be the number of rotations impossible. So, that is what I want to show here. Energy means energy means power integrated over a period of time. Okay. So, now to understand that we have to clearly understand these flux concepts. Then only we can understand the phasor diagrams. Why we need a phasor diagram? Because we need the torque expression. The torque is always because of the interaction of the flux and the current. If you see the PMMC, in the PMMC torque is equal to bina, V i n a, V i n a. So, that is the interaction of V and I. So, not. Similarly, here also we are going to have an expression. So, let us see. First of all, this particular flux passing through the pressure coil, it is going to create. Why? Because this aluminum disc is a metal disc, right? So, when the metal disc is rotating under the two fluxes, happens now. It is cutting. So, and remember, this flux is a alternating flux. Or not? This flux is a AC type flux, alternating flux. When an alternating flux cuts aluminum disc, it is a metal disc, then what happens? A time varying flux, when it interacts with the metal, then definitely what happens? Internally, it creates an induced voltage. Yes or not? So, now if you check, it creates that an induced voltage. So, that voltage is called as EMF induced due to the pressure coil. So, now internally here, what happens? This creates this creates EMF induced because of eddy effect due to the pressure coil. And because of this, what happens? There is a current also is created. So, there is a current, eddy current, we can call that is the eddy current generated due to the pressure coil flux. See the sequence. Try to understand the sequence. First of all, the VPC, IPC, IPC. So, that creates in the aluminum disc what a eddy voltage which is due to the pressure coil 
and which causes a eddy current due to the pressure coil. You understand? And remember, this particular, this particular flux. What is a this particular flux? What is the reason for this particular flux? If you observe, the reason for the flux, uh, particular flux is what? The reason for the particular eddy current. Why? Because you know very clearly, circular currents. The reason here is if you take a coil, if you take a disc, on the disc whenever the magnetic flux is interacting, magnetic flux is interacting and internally whatever the electrons are there, they will be coming in a circular pattern to the upward. So, when they are coming circular pattern to the upward, what happens? It creates a circular flux that is what we call as eddy. Eddy is a Greek word of circle. Now, this reason for this eddy flux is what? This eddy current. The reason for eddy current is what? This eddy voltage. The reason for this eddy voltage is what? This particular primary flux. As per the Lenz law, the newly created one will oppose the creator. So, this is the created one. So, this is the creator. So, definitely between them, there will be a opposition. There will be a opposition between this and this. You understand? Try to understand the current passing through the pressure coil creates a magnetic flux that act perpendicularly to the aluminum disc that cuts the aluminum disc metal which induces a DEMF. And because of that DEMF, because of that DEMF, there is a eddy current and the reason for this eddy current is indirectly this flux. According to Lenz law, the created one will oppose the creator. So, between these two things, there will be a reflective type of mechanism. Similarly, if you see from the bottom, similarly if you see from the bottom, the current passing through the current coil, that creates flux in the current coil. This flux in the current coil, definitely what happens? This bottom, see, try to understand. Top to bottom, the flux due to pressure coil is acting. Bottom to top, flux due to current coil is acting. You understand? See the direction. Now, when this flux cuts this particular aluminum disc, then what happens? Here also, it creates certain a DEMF. Okay. So, it creates certain a DEMF. So, this eddy EMF I can call as EMF due to current coil and due to this eddy EMF there is a eddy current. So, that is also due to the this one. Okay. So, which creates, let me write here, which creates eddy EM, EMF due to current coil. Try to understand the suffixes clearly. So, this is eddy EMF due to the current coil and these are, this causes, this causes the eddy current, current coil. And who is the reason for this? This. Who is the reason for this? This. So, the created one is this, creator is this and between this now what happens? There will be again a opposition. There will be a again opposition here. You understand? According to Lenz law, the creator, created one will oppose the creator to understand this concept. Now, definitely what is going to be the torque mechanism? To happen a torque, there should be some interaction. So, this particular flux is going to interact with this and this particular flux is going to interact with this and now what happens? Because of these two interactions, there will be a, there will be a attractive force. Okay. So, now the deflection torque 1 is because of this 5 PC and IECC. Reason is this IECC, whichever is going like this, whichever is going to like this, it is going to interact with 5 PC and this particular IPC, whichever is coming like this, is going to interact with the, this ICC, 5 CC. Okay. So, now the torque TD1, try to understand. So, the deflection torque TD1 is proportional to the deflection torque td1 is proportional to what this particular i v c into the magnetic flux i e c c and definitely 
always remember torque represent torque definitely needs a cosine relationship of the angle right there should be some angle so why because torque power formula v i cos phi yes or not similarly so phi p c i e c c and the angle between these two angle between similarly deflection torque t d 2 T D two, the deflection torque T D two is between what phi C C and I T P C, and the angle between phi C C and write the angle rotation line. Easy for you. So this is phi P C like this. I E P C. Understood. So now the resultant torque will be T D one minus T D two. But first of all, we have to get this angle and we have to get the expression for it. So to know that angle, first of all, let me talk about certain things for you. Let me talk about this phasor diagram before going to the phasor diagram. This is a phasor diagram. Okay. First of all, first of all, let me take this phasor diagram. This is my. This is my. ipc because the reason for this entire chapter is the pressure coil is yes or not so this particular current obviously the current passing through the pressure coil creates the flux in the pressure coil flux in the pressure coil and remember the voltage in the pressure coil because pressure coil we observe like a inductive ideally ideally we can take it as a inductive so definitely what happens the voltage passing through the inductor will lead the current so this is the voltage so if you see this diagram so this is the volt okay i think it is visible clearly to you or else i will do one thing we will take this as a reference we will take this as a reference and let me draw the diagram here So first of all, what I required, I required the angle between for T D one, I required the angle between phi phi C. Okay, let me take here. So this is the T D one. So T D one is proportional to proportional to phi phi C I E C C phi phi C and I E C C. Okay, na and the angle between cosine angle between S R not the cosine angle between phi phi C. And I E C. So to know that, first let me take a reference phasor. With the phasor, we'll go. Let us go with a phasor like this. So first reference is our pressure coil current. So this is our pressure coil current. so this pressure coil current will create flux actually pressure coil is a inductive type yes or not it's a inductive type so definitely what happens it will be having certain voltage voltage across the inductor leads the current okay so voltage across the inductor so this is a voltage which is ideally it should be how much ideally it should be Here in ninety degrees, yes. Uh, any, okay, let me take a straight diagram. So uh, to understand these concepts, a lot of patience is required. Directly formulas you cannot mug up in the exam. Okay, so this particular angle should be ninety degrees between what the voltage in the pressure coil. But this is ideal. Yes or not? Pressure coil is ideal. but if you remember this pressure coil is not purely inductive definitely it will be having certain resistance effect so as it is not purely inductive then definitely what happens this particular current cannot be 90 degrees with respect to phasor of vpc so that is the reason why what happens it is not exactly 90 so it is going to be like this so now if you check what is this now this is the ideal is the real what is this real now this is the ipc our phi clear and what is this angle now this angle i am taking it as delta 
okay that is the angle actual angle i am taking it as delta and now we need a power factor angle power factor always between the pressure coil and the current coil so now if i draw the current passing through the current coil so this is the current passing through the, let me take other color so this is a current passing through the current coil okay so this is the current passing through the current coil and it creates flux in the current coil and this particular angle is nothing but the power factor angle phi but what i want i want phi pc and iecc phi pc is this iecc iecc reason is what current coil and this current coil induces a emf na a d emf so that emf will be exactly 90 degrees to this cause na the voltage induced in this is be 90 degrees so if you take this as the 90 degrees so this is our eddy voltage due to current coil and this is the eddy voltage try to understand the voltage and the current both are 90 degrees to each other and now what is this angle so this particular angle is 90 this particular degrees and if this is the eddy voltage due to current coil then there will be eddy current due to this voltage so the eddy current i am taking with this rate the eddy current okay now so current coil components i am taking like this so definitely eddy current definitely eddy current lacks eddy current lacks eddy voltage by an angle of alpha by angle of alpha D. Now, what is the angle I want? I want the angle between phi PC and IECC. That means I need this angle. I need this particular angle. I need this phi PC, IECC. What is this? If you take this 90 plus alpha, from that, if you remove this portion, it's enough. So, what is this portion? This portion is nothing but this total is delta so this is the delta minus phi my dear so delta minus phi so this green color angle will be how much so this green color angle will be 90 plus alpha minus delta phi this is the green color angle i hope all of you understood okay so now the angle between the phi p c and i ECC will be how much 90 plus alpha minus delta minus phi. So, that is the most important point you have to understand. So, this is the way how you have to understand the things. So, for this, you need a practice of the phasers. The phasers have to be practiced in an effective manner, then only you can understand. One second, I want to repeat those electrical students who are watching this lecture. And especially IN students, those who are watching this, please go through this lecture clearly. First of all, from the top to bottom, let me explain you in brief again. This is our aluminum disc. Aluminum disc top, there is a pressure coil. At the bottom, there is a current coil. Pressure coil is suspended to M shape magnet, that is the driving mechanism part, and current coil is suspended to U shape magnet. From the top, there is a flux acting on this aluminum disc that is the flux due to pressure coil. And from the bottom, there is another flux is acting. So, there is a flux due to current coil. Now, because of the interaction of these two fluxes, there is a torque development. How the torque equation is developed, that is our next point. To understand that, I am explaining again. So, this is an aluminum disc. From the top, flux due to pressure coil. The reason for that is current due to pressure coil. The reason for that is voltage in the pressure coil. From the bottom, we are getting a current passing through current coil and that creates flux in the current coil. Now, this flux in the pressure coil cuts alternatively this aluminum disc which induces some eddy EMF. That eddy EMF causes some eddy current. And this eddy EMF and eddy current both are due to pressure coil. That is why suffixes are like and this particular eddy current definitely opposes the cause the cause is phi phi c so definitely this is the created one this is the creator created and creator ke 
between there will be opposition just like young generation will oppose the old generation created one will oppose the creator so that is what the lens law according to lens law the newly created one will oppose the creator so between these two there is opposition that's the point you have to understand the next thing from the bottom let us see from the bottom which current is traveling current passing through the current coil is coming that is creating flux in the current coil so this flux in the current coil is going to induce some eddy emf so this eddy emf with suffix eddy emf due to current coil that causes eddy current due to current coil now this is the cause and this is the effect so this is the cause always remember dear so this is the cause this is the effect so cause and effect okay na so effect will be always opposing the that's what happened here but in this situation what happens this particular flux this is opposing but this flux is interacting with this and uh, this particular current whichever is coming here which is coming in this direction this i pc coming in this direction is going to have interaction with phi cc so between these two current there is a possibility of torque interaction so between this in this okay so definitely what happens now there is a torque development to know the torque development i am taking the expression but to know the expression we need the cosine angle between these two so that angle is going to observe from this expression. similarly i can go for the other thing also what is the other thing that is the td2 okay so just a moment Okay, I will take some bottom. Yeah, already TD1 I have developed. Similarly, 90 plus alpha minus delta minus phi, we got it. Similarly, if you do the TD2, we are going to get 90 plus alpha plus delta minus phi. How that is possible? Also, I will explain here. One second, take any extra page. Okay, for your reference, I will draw the diagram here so that the first same again I am taking. So, this is the IPC. Okay, let me explain here itself, that is a better thing. Okay, so I will take with colors. So, first I am taking this IPC. Yeah, here. So, this is the IPC. Okay. And this reason for IPC is what? The reason. This is the IPC. So, the reason for this is flux. The Sorry. Flux in the pressure coil reason IEPC. Current passing through the pressure coil creates a flux. Okay. That is it. Now, the voltage voltage should be ideally 90 degrees the voltage in the pressure coil so this is the voltage in the pressure coil the voltage in the pressure coil and the angle between this two must be 90 degrees actually so this must be 90 but practically speaking it cannot be like that because the pressure coil is not purely inductive so then comes the real. So this is the real. Cannot be 90, comes from an angle. So this particular angle I am taking as delta. This angle, this angle I am taking. Is it clear? Okay. I think it's better to draw separate. Eh? This is for my reference. I kept. Uh, I hope I, as I have drawn the diagram. We can possible here, uh, we can try, try, so that it will be benefited for you. Yeah, here only I will try, just watch. So, this is my, what is I want here? 
this time I want TD2. This TD2 is because of what is TD2 because of? TD2 is because of 5cc and IEPC. This 5cc and IEPC, and we need the cosine angle between these two 5cc and okay, we need the cosine angle because of that. So, first of all, this one I am taking it as IPC and this is 5PC. And now if I check, this is check this particular angle 90 degrees. So, this is our V. Is it clearly visible not directions? Okay. But practically speaking, it cannot be like that. Practically speaking, it is like this because pressure coil is not purely inductive, it is having resistance. So, now this is our IPC and IPC, and this particular angle is delta. That is it. And next, I am taking the current components. So, current due to current coil, the flux. So, this is. This is our current passing through current coil, flux in the current coil, the power factor angle, this is phi. Chal. Now I want what? I want the angle between phi cc and IEPC. So the reason for IEPC is what? Eddy EMF. So first of all, I have to get the Eddy EMF. This Eddy EMF is coming because of this phi piece. Yes or not? So now I am taking the other way angle here. So, this particular one, our AD EMF due to pressure coil, AD EMF due to pressure coil, definitely this and this will be 90 degrees. I do understand because the reason for this AD EMF is this current, but because of this AD EMF, there is AD current now, so that will be lagging. So, that will be lagging by an angle of alpha. That will be lagging by an angle of alpha. Okay. So, this is what we call as IEPC. Now, what I want? I want the angle between IEPC and pi cc. That means this particular angle I want. That means if I take in a right, so this particular angle I want. Now tell me, this will be 90 plus alpha and again this, this is nothing but delta minus phi na. So if you check, what is this? What is this? This will be delta minus phi. Am I right? Delta minus phi. So, now the total will be what? So this will be total. This will be 90 plus alpha. 90 plus alpha plus delta minus hope all of you stood okay so we got 90 plus alpha plus delta minus phi so that is the angle between got it this is what i want to say these two phasor diagrams are very very important and that's why i have spent a lot of time here but trying to understand the phasors is very very difficult for the im students but they have to practice they should know the basics and from the basics they can get it. Always remember the voltage and the current in a pure inductor will be having a 90 degrees to each other. Okay. Sure. So now these are the torque expressions I got. So what is the resultant torque? Let me talk about here. The resultant torque, deflection torque, Td is proportional to Td1 minus Td2. So what is Td proportional to Td1? What is the Td1? We see the TD1, we see the TD1 here. What is the TD1? TD1 is this 5PC IECC. Five PC and IECC cosine 90 plus 
alpha minus delta minus am i right okay so this is our pd1 okay let me do one thing let me do one thing first let me write let me write once again let me write td1 td2 expressions so that please let me write td1 td2 we have done right so td1 td2 we have done so that expressions will take it see what is the td1 expression one is equal to okay so first let me write the td1 expression td1 is because of ipc and iecc td1 is because of ipc and iecc proportional to ipc and I E C C pass of angle between them ninety plus alpha na ninety plus alpha minus delta minus okay next if you observe closely here this one I P C is related to what try to understand I P C is related to I P C and that is related to C. Okay. And IECC straight away is due to EECC and that is due to ICC. A, I can write PD1 is proportional to IPC in the place that is VPC and IECC we can write ICC as of 90 plus alpha minus delta minus try to understand once again what i am doing try to understand what i am doing this is a td1 expression here ipc but 5 pc is due to ipc ipc is due to vpc so i should get a basic power expression vi cos phi. my intention is to get a vi cos phi. similarly if you do td2 also same vpc ICC will get cosine 90 plus alpha plus delta minus phi you are going to get. And the resultant torque TD is proportional to TD1 minus TD2. So, if you do that, what I am going to get? VPC, ICC, if you take common cosine. Uh, if I take cos terms also cos this term minus this term cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b cos of so if I take common cos of this term 90 plus alpha minus delta minus phi minus cos of 90 plus alpha plus delta minus this is the expression okay cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b so do some mathematical adjustment and finally what i am going to get this expression finally i want to say this expression td i am going to get as vpc ICC sine of delta is phi. That is the final expression after simplification we have to get. So, this is the deflection torque mechanism. The deflection torque is equal to VPC ICC sine of delta minus phi. Obviously, this is the practical situation. But in ideal situation, this delta must be equal to 90 degrees, yes or not? In ideal situation, this is the delta, right? 
so this is the delta right so this is the delta so this particular delta must be 90 degrees okay so that's what i want to say the deflection torque is equal to some constant vpc i finally v i sign but when delta is equal to this i am going to get the 90 degrees if i am taking sin of 90 minus 5 cos 5 so deflection torque we got now we are going for the braking torque so to know the braking torque my dear here if you come back to the diagram in the braking torque what we have this is a spindle i think all of you got the de deflection torque expression See, let me write here once deflection torque finalized expression deflection torque finalized expression is v p c i c c sin of delta minus please keep a note of this point okay na? please keep a note of this point derivation we can do i have given the steps of the derivation cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus so if you make the derivation of that part definitely you are going to get the this term okay now let us talk about the braking see just like in pmmc we have the controlling spring definitely wherever the deflection torque is controlling here in the place of controlling we are having the braking magnet so what is the purpose of braking system i have given some text here the permanent magnet is used for reducing the rotation of the aluminum disc if you see the basic picture if you see the basic diagram suppose if this is our basic diagram na so if you see in the basic diagram there is another magnet c type magnet so this particular magnet is going to act like a braking magnet for this disc so this aluminum disc is rotating here so this braking magnet is going to create certain effect on the rotation of the aluminum disc the aluminum disc induces the eddy current because of their eddy current cut the magnetic flux of the permanent magnet produces the breaking. See here. Now this aluminum disc is cutting now. So this aluminum disc is cutting this particular breaking magnet. So this particular breaking magnet is creating certain flux. So this flux creates an eddy current. So this eddy current will oppose the main flux. How the break is happening here? Try to understand. So this is our spindle. This is the aluminum disc and this is the distance. This R is the distance. Try to understand. R is the distance between R is the distance between the spindle and magnet. Spindle and magnet, we can say that is most important that R plays a major role. Try to understand. This particular spindle is like this, and for the spindle, there is an aluminum disc. Na. So now listen carefully. This aluminum disc is near to this particular magnet. This magnet is sending a flux. So this particular flux is nothing but flux due to magnet. This flux due to magnet is cutting this aluminum disc. Na. Whenever it cuts, it creates an eddy EMF. Na. So that eddy EMF will create some eddy current. Na. So this eddy current, whatever that eddy current is coming, definitely that will oppose this main flux. The more close the magnet comes, the more close the magnet comes, the more induced EMF, the more induced eddy current, the more induced eddy flux, the more will be the opposition and the speed will be decreasing. Understand? So try to understand these points clearly. Okay? Chala. So how this braking acts? The aluminum disc induces the eddy current because of their rotation. The eddy current cut the magnetic flux of the permanent magnet and hence the introduces the braking torque. Whatever that particular uh, eddy current is generated that eddy current is going to create an eddy flux this eddy flux is going to oppose it so that's what this breaking torque opposes the movement of the disc thus reduces their speed so that's what i have given see here i want to express i want to relate some breaking torque expression whatever the emf that is induced in this particular aluminum so try to understand one second i'm telling this aluminum disc is rotating under this breaking magnet whenever the breaking magnet flux is cutting it creates certain magnetic emf here okay na emf so this emf is purely proportional to the speed of rotation so emf is proportional to speed of rotation this is the first equation i am taking and emf is also proportional to the cutting flux cutting flux yes or not so two equations i have taken and this particular emf induced in the particular aluminum disc due to magnet is proportional to the pi m and n 
So if I remove the proportional, I am going to get a constant. So if you remember this EMF induced to magnet is equal to K into phi m by n. And what is the current? Current in the aluminum disc is nothing but EMF by impedance of the aluminum disc. So that will be now this is K1 if I take A1 phi m n by z. So this is the current. So after the current, now what is the basic expression of the breaking torque if you check? Sorry, if you check the breaking torque expression. We got this now. now. Let me see. The breaking torque expression is this, my dear. Breaking torque is always the product of flux and current and the distance. So, this is a force and this is a distance. Okay. So, this is a force, force and distance. Let me write here. So, this is the deflection torque. The breaking torque is proportional to force into radius. The force means here I can take the flux into current to radius and if I take this particular phi m into I m, what is the phi m? I m we got k1 phi m n by z. So, this is phi m, this is k1 phi m, try to understand k1 phi m n by z, n by z to r. So, if I remove this proportionality, I am going to get one more constant. Let us take K2, K2, K1, phi m square n by z into r. Okay. So, this is the breaking torque. K1, K2, phi m square n by z into r is a breaking magnet. But here one important thing I want to tell you. If you see the breaking torque expression, the speed expression if you check, if you check the speed expression, this R is going to become inversely proportional. Yes or not? Speed is always inversely proportional to if the distance decreases. Distance decreases. Obviously, more rotations are possible. Vice versa is also there. More rotations, more cutting of the magnetic flux, more cutting of the magnetic flux, again more of ED EMF and ED flux and ED current that can again more opposition. So that is the point you have to understand. So, this is one equation. We got the breaking torque. Now, if you see the coming to the deflection torque. So, this is a deflection torque. So, deflection torque is equal to K3. Let me take so K3 VPC ICC sin of delta minus phi. So, dear aspirants try to understand. So, this is the deflection torque expression. This is the breaking torque expression. Well, if you got it. So, now at steady state if you see. At steady state, the deflection torque and breaking torque will balance so that the disc rotates at a constant speed. Try to understand. In other instruments like PMMC and moving iron, when deflection torque and controlling torque of the spring are balanced, the pointer will stay stationary. But here it is not about the stationary, it rotates with a constant speed. So, I will write this as K3, VPC, ICC, sine of delta minus phi. That is equal to K1, K2, phi m square n by z in r. Let us take ideal case. Ideal case if I take phi is equal to delta is equal to 90. Suppose if delta is equal to 90, if I take that is ideal situation cos phi. So, this is some constant K3. This is V i cos phi. This is nothing but power. Na. We got the power expression. And let us take this all together is 1 K1 k2 i m square by z and r is equal to n. Now, if you check, if you integrate this, if I send all these things, this is the constant, this is the constant, this is the constant, if you take all these things and if you take integration of this power over a period of time, then what happens? This n will be proportional to energy. If I integrate both terms with time, what happens? This time is also constant here. And integration of time here, this will be energy. And if you send all these things, n is proportional to energy. So, these are the fundamental expressions of the gate examination uh, to get the questions uh, on our uh, particular energy. So, what are the expression I got? 
n is proportional to energy consumed the number of revolutions happening if you want you can take this reference derivation break but i don't want to make the students to struggle a lot but final conclusions i am telling for the gate examination these are the conclusions you have to remember the number of revolutions are happening is inversely proportional to the distance between the spindle and the aluminum disc and the number of revolution is directly proportional to the energy consumed so how to answer this question now n is proportional to e na so if i remove this proportionality i am going to get k into e n is equal to k into e some constant okay so what is this k k is called energy meter constant so k is equal to n by e number of revolution number of revolutions divided by energy consumed by meter in the time the time number of revolutions during the time So the units are revolutions per kilowatt hour. This is one of the important area where you can get the questions. So this is what we call as energy meter constant. What we call this K as this K can be called as this K can be called as energy meter constant. Okay, so on this context, many number of times questions can be asked. Energy meter constant is given as n by e, where n is the number of revolutions happening by the disk during the time divided by energy consumed by a meter in a time. Okay, dear. So now let us go through. Before going for the questions, let me talk about some more thing here. See here, what is the watt meter reading here? Uh, if you see the deflection torque, deflection torque was taken proportional as P i sin delta minus phi. Am I right? And a deflection torque reading is proportional to some power. This is a power expression. So let us take the power measured value. Can I take? So the power measured value is coming as what? V i sin delta minus phi. This is one important point you have to understand. But is it a true power? No. The true power is the true power is V i cos. Okay now. So there is an error percentage error due to pressure coil inductance effect here. Try to understand what I was to wanted to tell you. If the pressure coil is purely inductive, if the pressure coil is purely inductive, my dear. So this is a current passing through the pressure coil and this is a flux in the pressure coil and this is a voltage in the pressure coil and this angle is 90 degrees. If it is a pure pressure coil is purely inductive. You understand my point? So what is this situation? This is the ideal. Ideal. Ideal means what? If pressure coil is purely inductive. If pressure coil is purely inductive, this is a situation. But practically speaking, it is not purely inductive. That's why we are getting some deviation. So this is a situation of the current passing through pressure coil and this is a flux in the pressure coil. So this angle I am taking it. Down. So this is practical. This is what we call practical. Practical pressure coil is resistive plus inductive combination purely inductive is not possible purely resistive is not possible so it's a combination of resistive and you understand so that is a point you have to understand. pressure coil is resistive as well as when this delta becomes 90 then what happens automatically when delta becomes 90 if delta becomes 90 sine of 90 minus 5 cos 5 will come so on this definitely there is a possibility of expressing a question on percentage error here. 
sees, try to understand this particular point I can take, this particular take as a percentage. So, you can expect a percentage error, percentage error means measurement value minus true value by true value to the studier. So, these are the points of the energy. complete working. So, what I have discussed is a complete working of energy. Okay. So, now based upon this understanding, we have derived the expressions for n is equal to ke. We also derive for the torque expression. But of course, in during the torque expressions, somewhat complicated things are there. Those complicated things you can skip it. But with respect to gate examination, you can skip it. But with respect to IS exam, you have to remember it. If you want to skip it, but remember this particular derivation, final expression. Easy. I will, I will tell you easy way. Power is equal to V i cos phi. But here, it is not cos phi. Here, it is a sign of delta minus phi. The reason is due to the pressure coil index. Okay. So, now based upon this understanding, now we will try to move for some numerical problems coming next. Now, we will start the questions. An energy meter is designed to make 100 revolutions. So, N is given as 100 revolutions per 1 unit of energy. Energy is equal to 1 unit. As I told you, 1 unit means 1 kilowatt hour. Calculate the number of revolutions made by the disc when connected to a load carrying 50 amperes. So, current is 50 amperes and the voltage is 230 volts. Power factor cos phi is equal to 0 0.6 per an hour. Time is equal to 1 hour. First, let me calculate k value. Okay, what is asking? What is the number of revolutions? He is asking the n. For, this is for 1 unit of energy. That means from this we can calculate the k. n is equal to k into e. So, k is equal to n by e. So, that is 100 revolutions per kilowatt hour. So, that is a k. So, now first let me calculate the energy. Energy is equal to power into time. That is V i cos phi into time. Yes or not? So, V is equal to 230 and current is equal to 50 amperes. Cos phi is equal to 0 0.6 and time is equal to 1 hour. So, this is divided by 1000, you will get then kilowatt. So, what are the answers now if you check? 230 into 50 into 0 0.6 divided by 1000 coming around 6.9 kilowatt hour. How much? 6.9 kilowatt hour. So, this is the energy. Okay, so now I want the n. What is the n? How to do the n? So, n I can do it. n I can do it. Number of revolutions is proportional to energy. n is equal to k into energy. Yes or not? So, what is the k he has given? Already we have calculated k as 100 revolutions per kilowatt hour. So, this is 100 revolutions per kilowatt hour into g. So, what is the energy? 6.9 kilowatt hour. So, 6.9 kilowatt hour. So, now this kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour gets cancelled. So, I am going to get uh, 69 by 10, 1 gets cancelled. So, 690 revolutions are going to happen. The right answer for this question is option A. 690 is the right answer. 690 it is not printed over there. 690 is the right answer. Try to understand. Try to understand. First, from the given information, I have taken the K. K is what we call as energy meter constant. So, that K I have taken 
and uh, have continued but the most important point is the conversion of energy units always try to take the energy units in kilowatt hour okay so from this answer is 690 evaluations let us move for the next question so this next question question number 2 if energy meter disc makes 30 revolutions in 200 seconds how many 30 revolutions in 200 seconds when a load of 850 watt is connected so what is the load so the power is given the power is 850 watt what is the meter constant is asking how to do it n is proportional to k n is equal to k into e okay na? so what is the power 850 watts if an energy meter disc makes 30 revolutions in 200 seconds when a load of 850 watt is connected to it so first let us calculate energy energy is equal to power into time so power is equal to 850 watts into time is equal to 200 seconds okay so if you divide this by 1000 and if you divide this by 3600 then we are going to get kilowatt hour that is the energy okay okay so how much if we simplify 850 into 200 divided by 1000 divided by 3600 coming around 0 0.047 kilowatt hour so now question asked is k a is equal to n by e okay so this is 0 0.047 kilowatt hour and n is equal to how much 30 revolutions so 30 divided by answer i am going to get as 635 how much 635 revolutions per kilowatt hour that is right okay clear the right answer is 635 revolutions per kilo simple don't miss the calculation part simply power energy is equal to power into time 200 seconds is the time so 200 seconds I have converted into hour. Right answer is 635 revolutions per kilowatt hour. Now let us go for another question. This question, question number three. A 220 volts one phase watt hour meter records a constant load of 8 amperes for 5 hours at 0 0.9 power factor. If the meter disc rotates 2400 revolutions during this period, what is the meter constant in revolutions per kilowatt hour? How to do it? See, what is the data given? The V is given as 220 volts. Current is equal to 8 amperes. Time is equal to 5 hours. Yeah. And the power factor cos phi is equal to 0.9. So, first let me calculate the power power is equal to vi cos phi energy is equal to power into time so v is equal to how much 220 current is how much 8 amperes cos phi is 0.9 time is 5 hours so if we convert this into 1000 is enough so we are going to get units kilowatt hour how much so 220 into 8 into 0.9 into 5 divided by 1000 it is going to come as 7.92 kilowatt hour we got energy what is the question asked he is asking the constant right so how to get the constant i can take n i can take n is equal to k into e is asking the k k is equal to n by e okay so the number of revolutions happening is given as 2400 revolution 
divided by 7.92 kilowatt hour. coming around 303 so k is coming around 303 revolutions per kilowatt hour okay so this is the right answer option b is the right answer 303 revolutions per kilowatt hour. don't miss the questions simple questions n is equal to k into e many number of times these questions were asked okay Question number four, let us see. The meter constant of a single phase, this single phase, two forty volts. So V is given as two forty volts. Four hundred revolutions is the A. Four hundred revolutions per kilowatt hour is the K. The speed of the meter disc is a question. The question and the current is given as 10 amperes cos phi is given as point e. Okay, so first let me calculate the energy. Energy is equal to V i cos phi time. V e is 240. Current is 10 amperes. Cos phi is 0.8 time. When nothing is given, you can take one hour. Why? Okay, now when nothing is given, the meter constant of a single phase 240 volts induction energy meter is 400 revolutions per kilowatt hour. So, when time is not mentioned, please take one hour. Why? Because the unit standard we are taking is kilowatt hour. So, now if you simplify this. 240 into 10 into 0.8 divided by 1000, we are getting 1.92 kilowatt hour. So, this is the energy. Now, N is a question asked. N is equal to K into E. So, K is 400 revolutions by kilowatt hour. This is 1.92 kilowatt hour it's cancel 400 if you do i am getting 768 revolutions how much the right answer for this question is 7 68 is the right answer. Yes. Question number 5 is a theoretical question. In a single phase induction type energy meter, the lag adjustment is done to ensure that it is MCQ. Current coil flux lags the applied voltage by 90. Pressure coil flux lags the applied voltage by 90. Pressure coil flux is in phase with the applied voltage. Pressure coil flux, current coil flux lacks the pressure coil. One of the important points that you would understand here is this is our current passing through the pressure coil and this is a flux in the pressure coil. Yes or not? And this is what we call the voltage in the pressure coil. This is what we call as voltage in the pressure coil this particular angle must be 90 degrees so that's what we have to say pressure coil flux lacks applied voltage by 90 so this is the ideal situation right so this is the ideal situation we expect the pressure coil flux should be lagging by 90 degrees but that cannot happen okay practically so this will be like this that's what we have discussed the angle delta Let us go for the question number 6. A single phase energy meter operating on 230 volts. So, V is equal to 230 volts. Frequency is 50 Hz. With a load of 20 amperes. Okay. For 2 hours. Time is 2 hours. At a unity power factor cos phi is equal to 1. 
the meter makes 1380 revolutions so n is 1380 revolutions in that period the meter constant k is equal to dash simple first calculate energy energy is equal to v i cos phi time okay so v is equal to 230 current is equal to 20 amperes getting a cos phi is equal to 1 time is 2 hours already given so you divide by this thousand this part will be kilowatt the units are kilowatt hour so that is the energy units 230 into 20 into 2 divided by 1000 coming at 9.2 kilowatt hour n is equal to k into e and from this k is equal to n by e k is equal to n by e so what is n here n 1380 revolutions divided by e is 9.2 kilowatt hour so 1380 divided by answer i'm getting 180 is coming sorry 150 150 revolutions per kilowatt hour i'm getting 150 please check 150 revolutions per 150 revolutions per kilowatt hour is the answer okay all are related to that particular yeah let us see this question last question the disk of a house service energy meter of 230 volts single phase 50 h 5 amperes 2400 revolutions per kilowatt creeps at one revolution per minute creeping is what there is a slow movement of the iron disc even when the current is not traveling he is asking yeah first let me write the data v is given as 230 volts frequency 50 current is equal to 5 amperes uh, this is the k k is equal to 2400 revolutions per kilowatt hour and uh, n is equal to 1 revolutions per minute Okay. sorry sir creeps that is creeps i think from this we can find out the k right unity power factor yes if you take for one hour if you take for one hour n is equal to k into e so what is a k k is equal to 2400 revolutions by kilowatt hour energy is equal to vi cos phi t energy is equal to vi cos phi t so this is 230 into current is 5 amperes cos phi is equal to 1 okay na so what is the time time you take 1 hour time you take and if you convert this into 1000 this kilowatt is also gone so what is answer now n so 2400 into 230 into 5 divided by 1000 230 volts 5 amperes a is 2400 revolutions per kilowatt hour creeps at one revolution per minute 1 minute ki 1 revolution means for 60 minutes it will be 60 revolutions. Two thousand four hundred revolutions per kilowatt hour K is equal to K 30 unity power factor. One second, one second. Let us take this as one minute. Let us take this time as one minute here. 
one minute time. Okay, that means into sixty. So thousand profit. So let us do now. 2400 into I think we are a mistake here. First, let me calculate the energy. Energy is equal to I cos E na. So what is the V value? V value is 230. Current is 5 amperes. Okay, current is 5. Last 5. Unity power factor 1. Time is not mentioned. The disk of a house service energy meter of 230 volts 1. 5 amperes, 2400. Revolutions per kilowatt hour. Beeps. 1 revolution per minute. Keeps per one revolution per minute. It's, uh, a take one. Time is not given. If you take one hour, divided by thousand. So how much you are going to get? 230 into 5. Coming as very good. 1.15 kilowatt hour. Energy. Yes, 1.15 kilowatt hour. Now let us take n. n is equal to k into e. What is k? k is 2400 revolutions per kilowatt hour. To energy is 1.15 kilowatt hour. When timing is not given, you can take one hour. So if you simplify, is coming in as 2760 revolutions. This is without creep. I don't understand. Without creep, n is equal to how much? 2760 revolutions. 2760 revolutions in one hour. With the creep, with the creep, what happens? n is equal to 2760 plus extra for 1 minute 1 revolution extra that means for 60 minutes 60 revolutions 60 revolutions that means plus 60 kareto we are going to get 2820 revolution okay so this is the with the creep or without this is the true value this is the measurement value and so percentage error will be 
measurement value minus true value by value into so 2820 minus 1000 by 2 760 into 100 760 divided by 2.17 very very good question without creep is actual without creep is the true value but what is happening there is a creep of the energy meter disk there is a creeping error because of the magnetic flux effect when there is no current also sometimes slow reading will be happening so that also added to the whenever the meter works that is also added 2.17 percent the okay dear so these are some good questions I have discussed on the energy meter so we have discussed the constructional features and the torque expressions and the energy vertical problems so we'll meet again in the next lecture with some more new topics thank you